You are now listening to Out of the Blank. 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 Well, welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Stephen Marchand. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and if you want what you do professionally? Sure. So um, professionally, I'm I'm an educator. I've been a teacher since I was um, right out of college. Uh, however, I was injured about a year and a half ago. And so since then, I've been on workers' comp. And in doing so, I've kind of taken my life in a new direction and um, I'm starting this web series called hashtag live long days, which is all about helping people turn their cannabis into meals that they can use, turning their medicine into meals that they can eat throughout the day. Okay. Why cannabis? It's funny because I have I have so many different answers to that question. <laughs> it's just um, you're you're a cannabis educator. I'm wondering what happened in your life that made you become a cannabis educator. I've had someone on before that was a teacher and realized that she was just miserable, and then marijuana kind of brought her into the realm of living and understanding the world and really getting enjoyment out of it, which I think a lot of people need to use it for, especially with giant forms of anxiety. I'm just wondering how you came across it. And and for me, it was actually. A little bit more accidental than that it, for I, when I was in college, when I was out of college, I would smoke here and there and a lot in college, not so much after I graduated, moved on, became a teacher, became a little bit more um, professional and didn't really have the, the desire as much to to use cannabis. And then um, it, it was sort of an occasional, if it was around, I'd use it. And if it wasn't, great. And at one point after a, uh, an injury to my shoulder, a friend of mine said, hey, I'm going to go smoke a joint. Do you want to go? And I said, sure. And despite having back problems for over 20 years, smoking that joint was the first time that I really noticed relief to my symptoms. I had never smoked while I was injured. I would always go to a doctor and be prescribed opioids, or I would be prescribed muscle relaxers, or huge doses of anti-inflammatories that would just rip my stomach apart. And then here, this, this drug at the time illegal that I had never put the two together. I'd heard that it was that it had anaglastic effects, that it could be a pain reliever, but never put the two together until then. And from there, just started using it more as a medicine when I would have my back problems, when they would really flare up, which started happening more and more to the point where I needed a surgery about a um, little over two years ago. And then when recovering from that surgery was when I was injured at work. And then that led to another surgery, which has also led to another surgery. And so now I use the cannabis because the amount that I actually need to medicate throughout a day, if I were to use any of those other things doctors were prescribing me, I'd be, I'd be done. I, I, I couldn't be taking opioids for a year and a half with the symptoms that I have right now. And, and there are a lot of times that I can't physically get around without having some kind of medication in my system. If I tried using Aleve or Advil or any of those things, it would destroy the lining of my stomach. And these are all things that I've been through before. And this is the first time that I have a medicine that can actually get me through the day and get me through without feeling like I'm destroying my body or destroying myself. Yeah. Positive stimulus and a physical stimulus as well. When it comes to like your mind and your overall well-being. 
you know, you feel happier because you're not in pain at the same time, you're not in pain. So it's obviously working. We can talk about medications and the types of pills and all these types of things that are instant fixes and obviously work, but no one ever looks at the variety of other things that you could be doing, such as forms of meditation, forms of relaxation, forms of yoga, spa therapy, massage therapy, acupuncture, um, and even marijuana in general, or cannabis, if you want to call it that. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but Bruce Lee, uh, he used to chew hash. Um, he had major inflammatory problems when it came to his spine. Uh, his disc would become inflamed, so he used to chew hash. Uh, it sounds really fucking strange, but I mean, it, it's just that type of style of medicine and that type of understanding of medication is completely different from America, where we've grown up, where a pill is the instant fix. Uh, hemp is banned, all these other types of things, only on the factor of it was so stigmatized for so long, but it's more beneficial. And, and, and it's not only the stigma, but you also have to follow the money, which there is so much more money to be made in those pills than there are in a plant that people could grow in their backyard. You know, it, it's, there's, there, there are so many different factors that led to it becoming illegal in the first place this prohibition has been has been going on and, and for around a hundred years now and a lot of it came about because of money and and you're seeing that today where now that it's becoming you know, becoming legal either medicinally or recreationally you're seeing a lot of these uh large companies coming in and buying out areas to build these gigantic farms because they're trying to corporatize it the exact same way that the pharmaceutical industry is. And why are you typically working on stuff that's baked into food? Um, edibles I, I, has been my priority or favorite when I did uh, deal with marijuana only on the subject of smoking it. There's way too many effects to it I didn't like, such as like the burning in your throat, such as like that like, kind of like, <clears throat> I guess it's just a weird different high, I would say. Eating it is definitely a little bit different, mostly because it feels like it hits you fucking eight hours later. And it, it's, it, but it's always been a lot more fun and enjoyable for me. Yeah. Um, and there is a big element to the enjoyment factor for me. Um, but that how do I want to say this? When I started for the first couple experiments with edibles that I tried, I had some that worked, some that didn't. And, and that leads up to um, the, the current edibles that I'm making. So at first, you know, I tried the brownies and I ate some candies or gummies that somebody gave me here and there. Um, and so I know that, the food has a longer lasting effect in the system. And so when I'm looking for pain relief, having that long lasting effect is really key. Um, another big part of this is after my first back surgery, I had a pulmonary embolism. So I had a, a blood clot in my lung that almost killed me. And it was because of complications from the surgery. And it was described to me as many doctors as just bad luck. However, going into this third surgery, I didn't want to put my lungs into any position that they would be at any more risk. And so before I went into the surgery, I cut out smoking altogether, which also is technically illegal in Pennsylvania. Uh, if you're a medicinal patient, you're not allowed to smoke it. You have to vaporize it or turn it into edibles. Um, that doesn't so, make any fucking sense. No. I'm sorry. I, I, I really, <laughs> Zero. I really hate to like just even cut you off there. But the whole factor is, I don't understand. It, you're getting high anyway. Why does it matter which way you're getting high? Is it because it's going to contaminate people around you? So you're telling me, Pennsylvania, the fucking state of Pennsylvania. There is mountains. I can't go up into the top of a mountain and smoke. That's that's going to be disruptive to everybody else around me. If, if you get pulled, if you get stopped in Pennsylvania. Now, I'm not talking about Philadelphia because Philadelphia has its own decriminalization laws. But if I were to be wandering around in Luzerne County 
and I had a bowl on me. And that bowl had been had clearly been used for smoking cannabis. I could have been I could lose my card. Um, there have actually been people that have been cited, arrested because they and or or at least have forfeited their card because they were caught smoking instead of vaporizing it. It's rare, and it's the assholes that are you know it's those it, it's those cops that are looking to be an asshole on this subject that are doing it and again in philadelphia i could pretty much walk down the street smoking a joint and no one will say anything i'm not going to but uh, because that's not my relationship with cannabis typically um but you're not going to get in trouble in philadelphia it's a hundred dollar fine if you get caught um and they don't usually even they they don't usually even enforce that well even talking about let's let's go back to the cannabis treat thing with um it, bringing it into cooking why particularly cooking though is it just cuz you prefer that form or is it just cuz it's an easier and safer way i guess of getting high well it is so especially those first three weeks after this surgery that I had, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't putting anything into my lungs. Um, so I didn't, I didn't do any dabs. I didn't do any, I didn't use any smoke, nothing. Um, and I'm going to continue that for another, for several more weeks. Um, I, I, I dab now. Um, the vapor is just gentle. God bless you, man, for dabbing. Holy <laughs> shit. I did that once, never again, dude. Oh and, and, a, and it's funny because a lot of people have that response. I, I do have an extraordinarily high tolerance right now. No, I so, got fucked is what happened. This yeah. is what happened. <laughs> Somebody set up a dab for themselves. Somebody that smokes every single day, multiple times a day. Me, yep. rarely smoking, maybe once every couple of months or something. Just regularly regular weed never having a good experience with that in general either by the way somebody <laughs> put up a dab to make for themselves somebody that smokes a lot they were going to go do it but they got high on a regular joint before so what they did was they forgot that they set that up and they go hey man why don't you try a dab i said i've never tried it before i don't know what that's like oh dude it's going to get you 10 times higher i was like then fuck no and they said just <laughs> do it it's it's not going to do much to you it's not that much and not that much for him this thing was a giant glob the size of a quarter i swear to you <laughs> i went right in there and i cleared the whole entire thing like i've always done like you start it you better finish it next thing <laughs> you know i backed away everything hit me at once i ended up getting i would call it couch lock but more of like a floor lock because i was on the floor mm -hmm. i was sitting like you know indian style couldn't get up i got a chick-fil-a chicken wrap and I couldn't eat it. There was a bloodhound that just started laying in my lap. So a bunch of weird shit was going on at the time. I could not explain. I ended up locking myself in the bathroom for 45 minutes because I couldn't figure out how the fuck to get out. <laughs> yeah. For the record, the, the amount that you just described would last me about two weeks. <laughs> I was dead, dude. I have, yeah. You don't know how, like, I was at some person's house. So I barely knew this person. So you're trying to keep cool, but you really can't because people yep. can tell you're freaking out. And then you start worrying about people freaking out and all this other types of shit. <laughs> I ended up, I think I was high for like the next day too. Cause I remember waking up and like, what is going on? Like you try and sleep it off. You just wake up the next day. Like you're hung over. Right. Which that actually happened to me when I first started with, with edibles. The, the first time I, I had an edible that worked. Um, I, I ate a little bit of it. I, I made some butter. I just heated up. I had a little bit of shake and I heated it up in some oil. Then I mixed that oil in with some butter and then put it on some toast and didn't feel anything about a half hour later. And so I went and did the rest of it. <laughs> and, and then another half hour later was like, man, this is stupid. I, I don't know why I did any of this. It didn't even work. And then another half hour later, I was fucked. <laughs> Something came on TV that made me laugh. And then for hours, the next several hours, all I could think of is I can't show up to work like this tomorrow. My boss would kill me. And then about 
hour and a half before I went to before I would have gone to bed if we were declared a snow day the next day. And so I just had the time of my life. <laughs> but at the same time, it's that feeling of like, oh shit, I didn't expect this to get me this fucked. <laughs> and now here we are. <laughs> um, so I have to ask now, what is your best high experience? Um, my best high experience. It's going to be a, a difficult question to basically ask because I know you probably had a few of them, but I've had least out of all my, I guess, things. I, I've gotten to a point where I've gotten so high and it was like during December, like, I mean, years ago. And I remember the snow, like it was a, it looked like it was about to snow. And just that feeling of being in the moment, I was with like my brother, it was just so serene and calm. And it felt like we were both like connected, like we were playing music together. So it felt like we were on the same kind of frequency. Right, right. And just having that bonding experience, he's older than me. So, you know, you always look up to your older brother or something. Yeah, yeah. And uh, then afterwards, like, he's like, dude, you want to go get some, uh, you want to go get some food? I'm like, what? So we walked down to, um, I lived right next to a pharmacy. So we would just walk across the street to a thing called Walgreens and we would get um, Arizona teas. It's two for a dollar. So I got mango. He got grape. We came back to the house, loaded up some taquitos. But, you know, when you put a whole box of taquitos because you're you're fucking person. I, I mean, I could kill a box <laughs> of taquitos, I guess, sober, too. But right. <laughs> you're, when you're high, everything seems like you want more than you actually do. So we made a box of taquitos, put them on this giant plate, put them in the microwave for 15 minutes. Yes, 15 minutes. No exaggeration. Um, <laughs> to the point – and then we just we, – we played video games. I remember we played Lord of the Rings. Uh, I forgot which, which version of it it was. But we're sitting there, and we're eating the taquitos. So the ones on the very ends of the left and right side are super hot, and as you work your way to the middle, they're super cold. So at the ending, we get down to one taquito, but like – it was amazing to like be able to have that experience to just always yeah. have stuck out in my head and it lasts felt like it lasted hours yeah yeah i i actually have kind of two like cathartic moments when i was w from from being high and the one time it was i i was at i lived in seattle for a couple of years right after college and i um woke up that morning and, and I used to smoke cigarettes and I woke up that morning and didn't have any. And then by the time I got to my band practice that afternoon, I was really kind of, kind of jonesing for a cigarette and we ended up smoking a bong. And then all of my friends were like, let's go out and have a cigarette. And I was like, no, I'm good. Like, I don't want one. And then Later that night, I just remember I was high enough that I somehow had this, if I had a helmet, I could prove God existed sort of thing. Like the, one of those kind of another spiritual level kind of high. But the most important thing that came out of it that night was if I stop putting cigarettes in my mouth and lighting them on fire, I won't be a smoker anymore. And that was that was actually 20... Uh, it, I guess it was 19 years ago from last week that I just never touched another cigarette again. Um, and the other moment that was like that, because anymore, um, for the most part, cannabis doesn't have the, the, the recreational appeal to me that it once did. It, I, I don't really feel the high very often anymore. And when I do, it's more I'm feeling the the physical relief is what I'm going for. But after the my second surgery, I got home from it and I loaded up a it was actually a vapor a dry herb vape with this strain Tahoe OG, which is one of my favorites. And I walked out onto my back porch and just had this rush of how I had, I had just been through a lot and physically and stuff that was going on in, you know, outside of my, my personal life and things like that. There were just other things going on and it got to a point where I just had this rush of relief and just this feeling that, you know, my, 
leg wasn't hurting at the moment. My back wasn't hurting at the moment. My, and I just had this clarity and this euphoria and it just was a, this beautiful release that I, that I just ended up having on my back porch watching the sunset. It was just an amazing moment. Well, how did you injure your back exactly? So, um, the first injury was when I was 18 years old. So we're talking 22 years ago, 24 years ago. I was, I, I lifted a lawnmower wrong and I just bent down, went to pick it up. There was this dagger pain in my back and I just was, oh shit, went in right away, laid down, ended up putting some ice on it. And the next day I was okay. And sometime within the next year, I had another big spasm. It kind of bothered me. And that continued for a few years until I needed to take a trip to, an, to a hospital. My, uh, I have herniated discs in my back. And along with arthritis going down into the, the base of my spine. And so those discs just never got better. and for 20 years continued to just have more and more problems until at some point the one disc actually slipped down into my spinal cord and that was the first surgery that I needed and then flash forward to about six months after that when I had been recovering actually it was yeah it was about nine months later I was recovering well I was doing all right I went back to work and um and again i'm a middle school teacher i was a middle school teacher and there was a, a middle school teacher in philadelphia in a somewhat rough school and a fight broke out down the hall and i just walked into the room and, and when i went in i had the idea i saw other teachers holding students out of the room and so in my mind i was going into that room to do crowd control for the students that were already going to be in there. I was going to go in there to tell kids to put cell phones away, to back up, to stop cheering on the fight. I was going in just to be crowd control. Um, and all of the students in the room, no phones were out. It was just kids looking on at this fight, horrified because it was just that, intense when it when when it was started and i was followed in by the assistant principal who tried to get in there and start breaking it up and then somewhere in there i got shoved and all of the progress in my back pretty much just went away and i ended up going and seeing a doctor at first it looked like i was going to be okay i hadn't lost strength in my leg which i which had happened previously but within a week, I was back to having no strength in my leg, the the pain, you know, and, and just shooting back pain that, I, that does not go away. Um, the the cannabis basically takes it. If I'm at a if I'm at a nine, the cannabis will bring me to a seven, so I can walk around. If I'm at a if I'm at a six, which is about where I, I usually live around between a four and a six of my pain level. And so when it's at a four and I can get it down to a one or a two, then I can actually have a meaningful productive day. More often it's around a six, bringing it down to a three or a four so I can function, but I'm still tethered to a couch most of the time. But when we talk about incorporating it into food, what types of food are you cooking into? Every time I ever get like a little bit of marijuana or someone that I know has marijuana, they always talk about how smoking it's a lot better because you use more of it. Cooking it's a bit of a waste because it takes a lot to make something. Yeah. So for for one, when you're cooking it, you are going to cook out some of those cannabinoids, some of the THC, some of your terpenes. You're going to lose. A, a certain amount of that when just from the uh, just from the very first step of decarboxylation just when you heat it up enough to 
make it so it's active so it, you can put it into your food and feel those effects um that's going to lose some thc then you put it into some butter and you infuse it into the butter or the oil or whatever fat you're using that's going to lose some thc as well so you do lose thc every step of the way um where i find the trade-off to be is that you also have a product that's going to last a lot longer so you're in in the sense of the high will last longer the the medical relief in my case will last longer and so um and so when it comes to me doing edibles and again because i was doing this because i didn't want to be on inhalants i decided i didn't want to be eating fucking brownies and cookies for all day every day while i'm in this recovery process which has actually been much worse and and i've needed a lot more than anticipated in this recovery process and so it's the matter of i wanted it to be in my regular food and then while i started planning for this back in december i was introduced to the show bong appetit with um Abdullah Saeed and um, Vanessa DeLovato and um, uh, Ryan Pritchett. And the whole show was basically having a party where you bring in a professional chef who incorporates cannabis into this entire meal. And then they have a party where they sit there and enjoy this meal together. And I was like, that's what I want to do. I want to incorporate it into my regular food. Um, and then I also, from watching that, that's what led to the web series that I'm, that I'm starting now, is I wanted to be able to teach people how to incorporate this into the food and how to teach them how to make the, how, teach them how cannabis can help them and how it can serve as that medicine. And and so in putting all of that together, um, that's what led to, um, what's the word? Um, that, that's what made me, that, that inspiration and those things coming together led to this hashtag live long days web series that I'm doing. And I'm, I'm doing this because I want other people to be able to see this benefit. This is a medicine that some people actually need to take throughout an entire day. Well, it's the same thing with going on, like what's going on now in the world, the coronavirus, you know, uh, it's, you, you stick with me on this, but I have an intestinal issue where I actually need fucking toilet paper, but everybody's buying fucking toilet paper and I can't take a shit. So it's like, you know, that, that becomes a problem. There's people that actually need something like this, but you know, people tend to waste it or do something bad. The problem is with cannabis even though it's a major benefit and it helps out so many people when it comes to PTSD and every other type of medical illness that someone could suffer from, whether it comes from a, a physical injury such as yourself or uh, maybe a mental infliction, the fucking way it gets stigmatized. It's been stigmatized for so long. And then any picture you see, if you look up hashtag baked, hashtag weed, hashtag cannabis, it's some person named Smoker Chick 420 that's fucking wearing a beanie with a giant marijuana leaf on it, going insane with a giant bong rip. It does the whole thing a disservice to people that are actually trying to get into it. And and what's funny to me is I like I understand the recreational side of this uh, of this drug. I mean it's it, it's fun you know i and and so i i understand it but you're right at the same time i i have arguments with people that are that that are telling me that i'm doing something wrong that i'm going to lose my mind and all of this other kind of reefer madness bullshit because i don't want to be strung out on opiates I think about how what my life would be right now if I was using if if I was relying on opiates to treat my pain. I I don't know that I'd be alive right now. And and that's and and like you're saying with 
with the the panic that people are are experiencing right now and just trying to save themselves when there's you know yeah we're in a time of crisis right now but it's a time of crisis that we can manage if we aren't fucking assholes about it <laughs> if we aren't trying to just make sure we're the ones that are okay because this whole fucking crisis isn't about you or me it's about everybody and that's that's getting lost on so many people that everyone is affected by the things that you do so make the things that you do affect people positively yeah i think um if more people actually tried you know displaying it in a better way and not so outrageous like it's this thing that they want to show off as like i'm better than you or i'm doing this because it's illegal or whatever the hell it is like most people do when you look up that instagram hashtag you know it's going to have a better eye on the public i know so many people that smoke weed and don't even talk about it like that it's just fucking it's their medicine much like you you want to educate people on stuff but the problem is someone as rational as you explaining it to somebody then they're going to understand it but then they see marijuana through the eyes of like a kid or somebody that's going insane and doing stupid shit it's like you're totally ruining the experience for everybody it's why most things stay illegal even though people super need them right which is which is a big part of my of my show is that i'm for one everything that i'm doing in my show i'm doing with a 100 percent up and up legal uh, there will be a disclaimer at the front. The Pennsylvania state law specifically says that you can incorporate your cannabis into your into your meals um, to make it easier for for taking them. Uh, so that's one hundred percent legal. Doing dabs in Pennsylvania one hundred percent legal. So if there's ever a part of my show that incorporates the use of dabs as well, again, it, it's all of I want to highlight the the legal aspects because there are these stupid legal hoops that we have to jump through too. The fact that I'm that that if I on my show decided that I wanted to smoke a joint, that would then be illegal, and I can't do that on camera. I, you know, if I tried to publicize that, I could lose my card, and that's ridiculous. But those are the rules I need to live by, and and it's even funnier to me because. Now that I've been so public about my cannabis use and my cooking with cannabis on um, on social media, I'm getting messages every couple of days from people who are offering to supply me and uh, who are offering to, um, you know, sell me their supply. And I, that's not what I'm about. I can't, I can't do that. Like I've, I, I have, kids i have a teaching credential that i need to protect protect and so this whole venture has to be within 100 percent of the law and i'm also glad to jump through these hoops because five years ago i was just in pain and for 20 years i was told take these narcotics take these opiates take the these uh take these anti-inflammatories. Um, I even had a doctor that when I said, I've been using cannabis to, uh, I, I've been using cannabis to treat my pain. Her response was, I'm worried that cannabis is addictive. I'm going to give you a low dose opiate instead. <laughs> like you're not, like you want to replace my, what you're worried about being an addiction. You want to give me a proven addictive drug to in, in place of it uh, the the so when it comes to these ridiculous hoops i have to jump through i'm glad to jump through them and i'm glad to help people jump through them and more people should take advantage of it and jump through these hoops you would and i think really that want with something yeah. so beneficial that there wouldn't be so many fucking hoops to jump through but i think that's just the medical industry in general i'm pretty, pretty sure it's messed up um i, I, mean, I know i'm well, I've had so many people ha t reach out to me and be like, I have to help you guide through the medical industry. I have to help you guide through to get the proper medications, the proper forms, the proper loopholes, the proper twists and turns and all this shit. I'm like, why is it so difficult to get fucking help? 
Why yeah. can't it be so much easier for someone that is suffering from something to get the help they need? Why does it have to be going through some backdoor bullshit, some loophole in a contract? It's just, it's too much. It makes it very complicated for people like me who are at a young age that don't understand it to the point where it's like, fuck it. I hate the medical industry because literally every time I've ever used the medical industry, they have screwed me over in so many ways I can't even count. It's, it's a reason why I haven't had health insurance in like four years it's because there's no point. It's, it's more of a hassle to deal with the doctors than it is to get help. And, and, if, you, and if you look at, you know, I, I, I know that there's all of the talk on the political spectrum about universal health care. And to me, when I look at that, at the end of the day, my question for, for everybody who opposes it is why don't you want everyone to be taken care of can you not see the benefit if every single person in this country did not have to worry about whether or not they were healthy and didn't have to worry about where their next meal was coming from and didn't have to worry about whether or not they had a roof over their head if we could just take those concerns away think about how much time they spend being productive and at least not being destructive. So why don't we want everybody to be healthy? The more people that are healthy, from, from an altruistic standpoint, I, you know, why don't we just want that for everyone? Why don't we want everyone's health to be better? And then if you wanna be a capitalist about it, it's better for your money if everybody is healthy more if you want it to be about earning then more people can earn money and spend money if that's what you want to make it about more people can do that if they're healthy and they're not spending their money on health care so let's rip apart the fucking health care industry and make it so that that's not what people have to worry about let people worry about things that that, that shouldn't matter worrying about food is not something that anyone should have to do ever. It, it drives me insane. Worrying about health care is something that no one should have to do. You should be able to be treated without paying for it. We have a lot to learn as people, especially when it comes to new ways of medicine. I definitely think that like there's a whole holistic healing movement that's going on. I think marijuana is on the up and up right now. Everybody's starting to dive into that a little bit more just on the factor of how legal it's becoming. But it's been illegal for so long just because of the fact that it's really hard to make money off of marijuana at least from a government standpoint for people we can but the government can't regulate it so they're trying so hard and that's why it's taking so long but now it's at this point where it's breaking through the dam i would say and they can't really hold it back anymore and, and what's really gonna suck is that when they finally what 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 we see happening in a lot of places is that when they finally make that legalization they're making it available the same <clears throat> big money corporations instead of letting all of the people that they've been throwing in jail for the past hundred years for doing this, all of the communities that have been destroyed by the war on drugs, there are some states doing it right and giving them the opportunities to, to, to legally enter the cannabis industry and legitimize themselves, which is what should be what the main reason I want that done. <laughs> I mean, from a selfish standpoint, I would love to get the folks from the Emerald Triangle to to form their own alliance because they're the ones that have been growing this stuff for for decades and have that love and the passion that they're putting into every one of their plants. <clears throat> it's not just a money grab. <clears throat> and 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 I that's one of those big that's one of the big elements to what I was talking about with with the the need for for providing this for more people. I personally don't benefit at all from the from the idea of a universal health care. I mean, I'm, I'm a teacher and currently I'm on workers comp. So my, my benefits are actually taken care of. And when I go back to work, I have all of, you know, all of those benefits. It's about, but how much more does everybody benefit 
if we take care of everyone, if it's not because of the job I have, that's giving me my, you know, my, my ability to say these things, you know what I mean? Like, well, if we talk about, let's, let's, let's bring it back to um, the edible treats or something. What do you typically prefer in an edible? Like I know there's lollipops, there's gummy worms, gummy bears. I prefer something, you know, like a dessert, but nothing too sweet, like a, like a solid regular cookie. Um, <laughs> for me, so, so because of the way I've been doing this, and like I said, I, I'm all about turning it into meals, right? I'd say the best thing that I've made is a grilled cheese sandwich. Whoa, um, yeah, all right, hang on. You can make a grilled cheese sandwich? I, yeah, wow. absolutely. You can, look, if you, if a recipe calls for any kind of fat, I can put weed in it. Is it <laughs> butter? You, yeah, butter, oil, heavy cream. I have ice cream in my fridge right now that I made from heavy cream <clears throat> that, would, that, that would knock most people on their ass. <laughs> um, I have, but, but yeah, I have the grilled cheese sandwich I made is um, I made a, I made an aioli with my cannabis. I infused olive oil and then took that olive oil and um, added and well, I, I took the olive oil and I emulsified it into egg and mustard and garlic to make that aioli. And so took the aioli, put that on the inside and the outside of the grilled cheese and had just an amazing sandwich. That sounds amazing. Did you put bacon on it? Uh, not yet. I, that one actually I had, um, I, it was ham. I had ham on it. That works. Yeah. I always try and look because I, I, whenever I go into like a, if I go get like vape coils or something, there's always like a, the CBD part of it where like CBD gummy bears and all these types of things. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's so weird. Like you got gummy worms, you got the little bottle cap things. I'm like, I wonder what else that they can create. Like what's the weirdest edible thing you've been seen or you've seen infused into food? Like what cannabis wise? Um, and, and well, and it's funny cause I feel like the, the answer to that question tends to be more the stuff that I'm, that I've been doing because that's, my goal is to find the stuff that no one is infusing and infusing it. Right. Um, so like I made mayonnaise. So I, in addition to the grilled cheese, I've also made pastrami specials. So I made, um, coleslaw and, um, Russian dressing out of the mayo that I made and turned that into a pastrami sandwich. I'm not going to lie. I hate mayo. That sounds a little bit disgusting. <laughs> that's, that's fair. In fact, when I first discovered that I could make mayo, a friend of mine was, came over to my house and when he was walking in, I was like, I made mayo. And he's like, that's disgusting. <laughs> my, my buddy Julian was like, no, thank you. <laughs> well, the one thing I really like about like marijuana in general is I believe it's a total like opener when it comes to the mind but also when it comes to what you're doing to yourself like if you're doing something that's wrong for your body like um it's it over -sensualized. like if you're drinking too much soda it's like when you're drinking soda when you're high your brain's like hey man you're not this doesn't feel good like it starts to yeah. really kind of oversensitize a lot of things that you're completely ignorant to yeah you're you are absolutely right and and it does i, I i'm a very chill person and i haven't always been and I really attribute a lot of it to, to the uh, amount of cannabis use that I, that I have, th that I've been doing for the past year or so. And I mean, I've been a chill person for a few years, but more and more, it's just when, when things are frustrating, when things are aggravating or when something's making me angry, it is so much easier just to be like, I, this isn't my problem or I'm not going to be able to solve this problem. It's just so much easier to let those things go. Um, and it, and I really attribute a lot of it to the fact that, that the thinking process, the thought process of, of being on cannabis in the first place, just I find is it really lets you see the, the bigger picture. The, yeah, the bigger picture. First and, of all, in yourself, first of all, is what we mean by bigger picture, not like a god or anything, but more like understanding of the world and really understanding yeah. of yourself. Now, it does last a little bit. Like I, first of all, I've got I've smoked, but once you smoke, you can't go back. First of all, your mind completely changes on the way you think of things. The like things were more 
had more feeling to it, had more care for it. like looking at objects like a desk or something meant more to me. You know, like I could yeah. feel the actual carvings in the desk, things that I took for granted, being more observant into life, walking outside and hearing the air and the trees and thinking of it as music. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I'll, I'll often, um, step out onto my back porch for, a, for a while I was doing back when I was still actually smoking it, I was doing what I called hits and hits and I'd stand outside with my guitar and I'd take a hit off of my bowl. I'd play a song. I'd sit and just chill for a minute and just enjoy the, the sun and the birds and the, the hawk that hangs out on the steeple on the church behind my house and then take a hit, play another song and just cycle through that. And, and it was just this great way for me to be able to be outside and just take all of that in. I'm mostly homebound. And so being able to step out, even if it's for five, 10, 15 minutes to, to, you know, look at my garden or to play my guitar, it's just such a nice, it, it's such a nice feeling to begin with. And when I incorporate the cannabis into it, it really kind of gives me that, that kind of universal feeling. And I think that one of those real big revelations that, that that I've come to is that idea that I'm, I'm not the universe. In fact, I have a friend whose band is called, I am not the universe, uh, my friend, Billy, but, um, he, and, but it took me a while to understand what his band name meant until I see the, the number of people that, that are out there that have the idea of, I need like, I need this, the things that I need and, and not about we need. And I find that the cannabis gives me that feeling of like, it, it helps me feel like it's not about me, that it's about a bigger, a bigger world and a bigger universe. I agree a hundred percent. I definitely think it's for some people. It's obviously not for everybody, but for the people that actually need it, not the ones that just use it because they love getting high and they love acting crazy. There are people out there that really have benefited from this, have really completely changed their lives. And in a world where depression is so heavy, it is definitely needed. I mean, it, for smoking it, eating it, whatever types of forms, these are all the same thing. As long as it gets a benefit to you, helps you stay focused, or maybe even helps you relax after a long, hard day because stress is a thing. We're all experiencing yeah. it, and this is just another way of being able to calm down. And and I, I really love how you mentioned that it's not for everyone. and. <laughs> and excuse me and it really isn't um my wife has tried it and doesn't enjoy it it's it's not her thing um and we have very different relationships with cannabis and she is very understanding and and helpful and supportive of everything that i am doing um of of the cooking with it of the tur of the um of the web series that I'm starting, um, hashtag live long days of my, you know, my need for, for doing dabs in the, in, in the house when I have to. Um, I also, I have a 16 year old son that lives here who is 16 years old and in high school and around kids who are using cannabis and doing it recreationally. And he and I, I have two other children that live with their mother but um, which I'm very open with all of them about what I'm doing. Um, but my son that lives with me has, has said to me, look, I'm curious. It's something that I definitely want to try, but I don't want to do it now. I don't feel like I'm ready yet. I'd rather wait till I'm in college, which I always say to my, which I've always said when I was teaching high school, there's a time and place for everything. And that's college. Um, but I, with my son, you know, he's, I can have open conversations with him and he is not interested in it. And I, you know, if he has friends over, everything is stashed away and locked away. Anything I use is clearly labeled and marked. I know how much is in there in case he does decide that he wants to be curious, but we have the relationship where I know that he doesn't, I know that he would come to me if that was something that he wanted to try. 
um, which would then have, have to be an entirely other conversation because honestly, I don't know how I would feel about that. Um, I, right now, he, I mean, he's 16. I don't think that he should be doing it. Um, I, and he sure as shit isn't going to get it from me. <laughs> um, so, but you know, he, I, I'm blessed with the fact that he isn't interested in it and that he isn't trying to sneak it to his friends. Um, and that he is, and, and neither of them like the smell when I'm cooking, <laughs> they, they both complain whenever I'm, whenever they're here, when I'm, when I'm doing my cooking, because the house will stink. Um, and and the other thing that I wanted to touch on with the idea of it not being for everybody, um, a lot of people that aren't comfortable with cannabis, with, with THC anyway, are finding that hemp really works for them, that CBD is really good for them. Um, personally, CBD is not good for me. Whenever I've tried it, it um, does a lot of good for my... Um, arthritis and the inflammatory pain, things like that, it doesn't help my nerve pain. And it actually makes my, I always feel like the neuropathy and the pain shooting down my leg and the weakness in my leg, I feel it a lot more anytime I use CBD. And I think that that's just because of the way that THC binds to the nerves and CBD instead does more of a crowd control for the nerves. It does more of the anti-inflammatory, but it's not binding to the nerves the way that THC binds to the nerve. Um, and and you know, then you also get into how the terpenes affect it and everything. But I, I see. I having said all that, I'm actually going to cook with CBD because the really good thing with it, if I I don't have to use it. <laughs> CBD, if I cook with CBD, I can give that to my friends. I can give that to people that need that help. Um, I also am very open to my friends and let them know if, if you're in the Philadelphia area and you have a medical card and you want to make your food into edibles, I'm happy to, do, to help you with it. I'm happy to, it, it involves you coming to my house and chilling for a few hours or maybe me going to your house if I can get there and chilling for a few hours while we infuse some cannabis into food and hang out and enjoy. But that's something that I really want to help people do. And it's, you know, it, it, it's something that a lot of people will benefit from. And so that's why I'm going to start also cooking with CBD eventually, because that's the stuff that I can give away to people. I don't have to you know, I, anything I make now, I'm making this amazing food that no one can eat but me. <laughs> and I'm showing these pictures of, of some food that I'm really, that, like I said, that grilled cheese sandwich I made, the mac and cheese was fantastic. My, um, I, I've, I've been going through and revisiting bro, all bro, these bro. recipes. Yeah. You gotta make me, I just, just please, I'm begging you. You gotta, I, so it has to incorporate fat in it. Yeah, it's got to have some kind of fat in it. Can Butter. You cook, all right, so if you use, no, I wouldn't say brownies, but can you make like a like a breakfast biscuit sandwich with a uh, edible infused? Bro, I made a quiche. Bro, okay, make. <laughs> all right, I got a recipe for you. You got to make this for me. All and right, I need, I need to see this. All right, so make a quiche, but instead of doing it like you know, incorporate normal ingredients that you would for be able to infuse it with edibles. But I want you to add some mushrooms to that sucker. I want you to add some, like, man, let's see. Some zucchini, maybe? Like, some nice grilled zucchini right, squash right, right, right. up in there. That sounds crazy, but I'm telling you, in a quiche, that would go perfect together. No, add, no, I can see it. I can see it. Add some diced up tomato to that sucker, dude. Yeah. And then take that quiche bit out, put it on a nice buttered biscuit, or maybe in, get a weed butter put it on there and then add mm -hmm. a drizzle of maple syrup, dude. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm following you. I am or following you. Take that quiche, take a, um, a little bit of peanut butter or something, spread it a little bit on top. Just hear me out on this a little bit on top, add a crushed handful of some uh, frosted flakes or something and drizzle it on top, dude. Have a nice yeah. crunchy quiche. Oh, that sounds amazing. And, um, 
Yeah. It's funny. My, this whole thing started with me before I started incorporating cannabis into it. I was just making eggs. I, I, when I was out of work the first time for my, for my back, um, I started making eggs a lot and just started taking pictures of my eggs and called myself the egg chef of Fowler street. I didn't want to call myself the egg chef of Philadelphia or even Maniunk because I mean, I know I I could possibly be the best one on my tiny block, but I don't know how I know, <laughs> you know, I was trying to, you know, it was a modest thing, but I, it was, um, but, but as I started, you know, doing it more and more and then incorporating the cannabis into it. Um, I've been tying those things together, this egg chef of Fowler street. And then you know, my friend calls me chef boy, our weed um, and kind of marrying the two. And, and so I love when I'm cooking with eggs, cause I feel like I'm, it's one of the best things that I do. And then I'm also, uh, and then when I'm incorporating it with cannabis, I'm finding all kinds of great new ways to do that too. So that eggs Benedict that I made yesterday was amazing. Well, I gave you a recipe. I want to see it made now. Zucchini, mushrooms. You know, you can honestly maybe take the zucchini out if you make it into a normal quiche. And then what you do is take maybe a little bit of peanut butter. I know peanut butter and eggs sounds disgusting, but trust me, it works. Maybe peanut add butter some, is easy to infuse too. I mean, maybe all that fat. With um, that uh, peanut butter. Add a little bit of a cinnamon dash on top of it. Maybe a little bit. Of, I wouldn't say syrup because if you're getting high and eating that, that's going to be really uncomfortable. You're going to feel sloshy. Um, then with that peanut butter in the quiche, add a little sprinkle of cinnamon and then add like a crushed up handful of like some raisin bran or some crunchy cereal to it. Dude, yeah, it, yeah. Would, it would be perfect. Then maybe some fresh blueberries or something and a strawberry on top. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, son. That's what we call an edible infusion. <laughs> well and that's one of the great things well one of the ways the way that i do all of this and the way that i'm able to do it into these entire meals is that i don't do super strong infusions right i made the, the one recipe i made these peanut butter balls and i they were just so strong that they were no longer in that enjoyable because who wants to eat one peanut butter ball you know, like who wants to eat half a peanut butter ball, which is, you know, which would basically knock someone on their ass. No, I want to eat three or four of them. So I try to actually make my edibles into a full, you're going to be satisfied with the amount you're eating on top of, on top of, uh, you know, you're also going to feel this in an hour and a half. I like to just gamble and just risk it all. Like if you say eat a quarter of a cookie, then eat the full thing. <laughs> well, and, and again, like the, the stuff that I make, I, I mean, I typically everything I make is I, I ration it to about 60 milligram servings. So everything has by my best estimation, about 60 milligrams of THC um, per tablespoon of butter. Um, so right now I have a, I have a pat of butter. And so a tablespoon of that butter is 60 milligrams. But if I'm making muffins, I'm going to infuse it differently, but I'm going to make it so that I'm, I'm going to use less butter, but those 12 muffins will each be 60 milligrams. So I know that I have that dosing down whenever I use it. I mean, it works for me, bro. Sounds, I yeah, mean, man. I was just staring at half of the photos on your Instagram. I'm just getting hungry looking at them. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I appreciate I, it's, that. everybody loves food. You just got to do hashtag food review and I swear you'll spark up in popularity. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll do that. I, I've been trying to that. I've been trying to, uh, change around my hashtags a little bit to see, to, to do that food review. I'll do that one too. Hashtag food review and hashtag out of the blank. Yep, absolutely. I would love to see those pop up in my news feed of just edible creations. Absolutely. Yeah, and like I said, it's been it's been a really fun journey. This starting from starting from a, a college kid who would just, you know, get high for fun to actually, you know, doing this for medicinal purposes, to actually do this for for the ability to have a somewhat normal life, 
you know, I, 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 I've had to come to terms with the fact that this could be it for me. This could be my life. My life might be more hours on a couch than standing. And that might be it from now on. I, and that's something that I had to accept. But it's much easier to accept it when I know that I have a way to also get through that. Um, both, with the, both in the physical comfort, but also in, in, the, in the escape that I'm not always looking. You know, it's not something that's the main focus of what I of what I do when I medicate, but that escape that sometimes comes with it is pretty key that it, that it does let me, um, it does let me see my life in perspective. The fact that I do have a roof over my head and the fact that I, that I can, that I can afford the medicine and, and it's expensive. If I wanted to, I could, I, I could probably go and, because I'm on workers comp get opioids for free. I could probably get them for free if I wanted to. Um, but I'm, but instead I'm spending hundreds of dollars a month on cannabis because my insurance won't cover it. Workers comp won't cover it. It's not FDA approved. It's schedule one drug, all of those things, no medicinal benefits according to the federal government. And so I, you know, I'm blessed in the fact that I can afford it. I, 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 to be honest, if I could, I would buy more than I actually have. If I could, I would do all of my meals. I would do all of my medicine exclusively through food and I wouldn't inhale and at all. I wouldn't even do the dabs anymore. I can um, live that lifestyle. I'm a pro definitely food guy over smoking it. Cause every time I burn the shit on my lungs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, you know, even the dabs are so much more gentle on the lungs, but you are still introducing a foreign agent into your lungs and your lungs are the most sensitive and vital part of, uh, of the, of the body. It's essential. And so uh, if I could, I would 100% only medicate through the, through the use of my food and, and through edibles. Um, but I, I can't afford that. I, I don't even, even I get though you. it's, it's hard. It's hard with, when it comes to bills and everything like that too, everything's got to, you know, what causes help, you know, is, or what is that you need for help? I would say it has to be so damn expensive to the point you can't afford to get the help that you need. It's like just putting something in, in front of somebody's face and telling them they can't have it. Yeah. And, and, and I, and I look at it from the view of I'm, I'm definitely blessed in the fact that although I, ideally I would like to spend, I would like to get more from my medicine. I get enough to, to manage, which most people don't get. Most people don't get what I get. And, and so I'm able, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful that I have a wife who is extraordinarily supportive of all of this that I've been doing. And, uh, and my children are all very supportive and understanding of, of what I'm going through. And so I just, I, I really want to have the opportunity to help those folks that aren't able to do this that aren't able yeah, to i get you man you've you've explained it plenty of times that i hear you out and you can tell by the sincerity in your voice too i, I get really passionate I, I really do and i know i repeat myself and yeah. and, and that's something that you're turning it, into the rambling man not the edible man come on now don't do this <laughs> but i really appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast too Stephen. this is why oh, i want to give you my pleasure i'm i'm stoked and thank you so much for having me yeah i want to give you here a minute at the end to kind of be able to promote your page and your content too so people can find your work we sitting here talking about it for so long now we got to tell yeah. them where it's at yeah so um you can find me on instagram at steve.marshawn it's spelled M-A-R-C-H-I-O-N. Um, also, if you just follow hashtag live long days, um, it's the name of my, uh, it's the name of the web series I'm starting. Um, hashtag live long days. We're going to be at livelongdays.com, but that's not launching until April 1st. 
So as of April 1st, you can go to livelongdays.com and see what we're doing with our, um, we, right now it'll just be mostly photos, it'll be recipes, and it'll be a, stuff about infusing your uh, food with cannabis. And then uh, hopefully, if we don't get shut down by the coronavirus, our um, first episode is going to be shot on March 30th. So we're hoping to air that sometime in April, probably around April 30th. Well, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank Podcast, and stay tuned for our next episode.